Hello guys, today I'm gonna do a little response to God is Grey, uh, finally. <laughs> So today, I was watching, a long time ago, I watched this video by God is Grey called Jesus is a Feminist, uh, replying to Girl Define, they have this thing going on, um, and in it, she talks about context and how you're supposed to, you're supposed to look up the history and you're supposed to do all this stuff, right? But when she tells the story of Judges, Oh, I think it's, let's see, 19, all right, where, yes, a very awful thing does happen, okay, maybe I can just, well, I don't want to play because I'm not sure what's going to go on, but anyway, <clears throat> I'm not sure you'd be able to hear it. So she talks about Judges 19. Judges 19 is a whole story about how this guy was traveling, he ended up in this city, um, they ended up staying with a guy. This guy's house was attacked by some, <laughs> just some raging evil people who wanted to rape and murder someone. They ended up giving, they ended up with the guy who was traveling, his basically wife, <clears throat> being raped and murdered to death. You know, raped and murdered basically. And then he gets mad about that, chops her up, sends her up around around Israel and in trying to prove what happened or something. I'm not really sure about that. I don't understand why he would chop her up or send her out around Israel, except that what he says in the Bible is that he is trying to get Israel's attention. This awful thing happened, right? But that's where she stops. She just says, you know, the, the Bible treats women hor horrendously. And this is how the Bible treats, treats women horrendously. And this is not how the Bible treats women. Okay. Some awful people got together and did an awful thing. I don't, I don't understand why the husband didn't defend her. I don't understand why the guy in the house was like, no, here, take her instead of raping him. I don't understand a lot of stuff. But what I do know is that if you continue reading, the, this instance starts a war. Okay, so her rape and murder is avenged through war and wiping out basically that whole town. Again, guys, context. You can't, you're going to read one portion of the Bible and say, okay, then that's the way it is. No. All right. Um, it's just not the case. It's not what, it's not even what happened. Okay. I think even the husband gets a little get some punishment later on after they get done wiping people out because he did nothing about it. And this is what, this is what drives me crazy about progressive Christians is that they, they want to see the bad stuff, but not ever see the good stuff that happens after it or before it or through it or any of that other stuff. To me, it's good that the reaction from the Israelite people is, oh my gosh, we have a ban of raping murderers. We're going to go out there and make sure this never happens again and wipes out whoever, whoever was responsible. So that means the guy who invited them in and did not defend her died. That means everybody who was involved died. That means, you know, just it, this did not ever happen again. They sent a message, a major message in response to her rape and death. Now, if I was, if I was raped and murdered, that's exactly what I would want somebody to do. Maybe I'm just weird and extremely old school, but I would want you to visit, you know, that sort of retribution onto my people, onto the people who did that to me. Um, we even have this for rapists now, where if you do that sort of heinous thing, you die. Okay. So it's not even that far out of the norm. Let me see. What else does she say in here? Oh, this one. This is the biggest one to me. Okay, so let me play this a little bit. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Him and they want to rape him. And he's like, no, don't rape me. That would dishonor me. Have you seen my virgin daughter and my concubine? He literally says, do with them whatever you want and forces them out into the street with the mob. And the verse goes on to say that they raped and tortured these two girls all night. If you're... So this is another thing she gets wrong. It's only the concubine. I went back and read it. 
the daughter, nothing happens to the daughter. It's just the concubine. But, I mean, you know, she's trying to do it from memory, so I guess she didn't go back and read it. You're not already furious in Deuteronomy if a man rapes a woman and gets caught. <laughs> okay, so I know what she's talking about here. I'm going to try and find it again because, for some reason, Deuteronomy, there's a lot in there. But basically... This verse is does not mean rape. Okay. It means seduction. And even though the even though when you read the Bible it says rape, it's just this it's the same issue we have with transferring things into English where the word love is always just love. Even though it actually means like brotherly love or sexual love or whatever. You 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 do have to go back to the original words which we have copies of all over the place and we have ways to do that i mean you can do that online and learn that it doesn't mean that blueletterbible.org i think or com will tell you exactly what the word is and what it means and it means seduction it's not that if he takes a virgin and doesn't get caught okay and this is the problem the this is the problem with progressive christians is that they will read the Bible with the negative outlook, not with the positive one. They will read the Bible assuming that it is evil. And when it's not, when all you have to do is take the Bible for, at face value for what it is, and you will understand that that cannot possibly mean rape. Because in the same section that she's talking about, they say rapists die. You are to kill them. You are to stone them. So that wouldn't make sense, right? So when you go into what the word that was actually used there means, it doesn't mean rape. It means seduction. So basically, if you're a player, <laughs> then you have to get married. Okay. So she doesn't like that. She does because she's basically saying that that means the Bible tells you to marry your rapist. No, it doesn't. It means that you get to marry the person that you were screwing around with before you got married, not your rapist, because your rapist is supposed to be dead. Okay, so let's see if she goes on a little bit more. I'm sorry, guys. I hope you can hear this. <clears throat> That's actually said in there. It's not just rape. It's like if you rape a virgin, oh, and you get caught, then your punishment is that you have to marry her and you can never divorce her. She would be forced to marry that man and stay with him for the rest of her life. And it's considered a punishment for him? Are you crazy? If I've read these verses directly from the Bible and they made you feel like dirt as a woman or you're... Okay, so they didn't make me feel like dirt as a woman because I looked up the context and I looked up the words and I looked up what it meant. Okay, in this section that she's talking about in Deuteronomy, I know exactly what she's talking about, I, but I'm going to have to go back and, and, and in the comments show you what I mean, okay? Because it's, it's easier to do it that way than it is to sit here and do all this. And then you can reference it later. Your rapist dies. He's supposed to be killed. That's his punishment. It's not to marry you, okay? If, um, if in, in not two, maybe three verses before that, it's saying to kill a rapist and then three down, it's saying, oh no, but you know, if you don't get caught or whatever she says, or if you get caught, then, um, you have to marry them. That doesn't make any sense, guys. It doesn't make any sense. But progressives are very willing to say, well, there's something wrong with the Bible versus saying, you know, okay, the belief that, you know, God gave us this, etc., that Christians believe. This is why I say progressives are not Christians. So anyway, I'm going to stop it there. I'm going to go look that up and then I will have it down in the comments for you guys. Don't believe everything everybody says. I would encourage you to even challenge what I've just said and go look at it for yourself. Okay. Th th there are awful things in the Bible. Absolutely awful things. Why? Because humanity, we are sinners. We do not lean towards doing what's good or right for others. We lean towards ourselves. We are self-centered all the way. And that is what, that's what part of the good news is, is that Christ comes to die for us sinners. 
us people who cannot who cannot possibly see beyond putting people ahead of ourselves the mob of guys who come and they just want somebody to rip apart they are thinking of themselves their pleasure their joy whatever it was now you know so i mean just think about that so that's why it's full of nasty awful things you know human beings did that god did not order them to do that you know this the way the progressive mindset here is just awful and it also leads towards lies because she straight lied to you here um anyway i will see you in the next one guys i'm gonna go look that up and then get, give you guys definition and more context here than she does all right I'll see you in the next one. Bye.